So every time I go to a city, I have someone come up to me, and usually multiple people come up to me and say, you know, I need to talk to you about something privately. I have these thoughts sometimes, and I don't know if I really believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then I have these issues with faith, and is Allah going to punish me because I'm having these thoughts, and because I'm having these whispers, and because I'm having these doubts? And the Prophet he puts, at, puts us at ease by saying to us two things. He says, one, that you could be having a conversation, people could be sitting around talking, and they'd be pondering upon the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying, you know, Allah created this, Allah created that. And then one of them would say, فَمَنْ خَلَقَ Allah." So then who created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And that's a hadith in Sahih Muslim. And the Prophet sallallahu he also said in another hadith in Sahih Muslim that a person might be actually contemplating, doing tadabbur and tafakkur, actually reflecting and contemplating on the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And feeling this high point and saying, who created this? And you would say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you're admiring the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then shaitan comes to you, the devil comes to you and says, فَمَنْ خَلَقَ Allah." So then who created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Prophet ﷺ, he says in both of these ahadith that when you start to have that thought, when you start to have those whispers of مَنْ خَلَقَ Allah," who created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, quickly say, آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By doing that, you do away with the thoughts of shaitan, by the whispers of shaitan, and you reaffirm your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punish you for the, the thoughts that you had and those words that were going through your head and things of that sort? Absolutely not. In fact, there's a very beautiful conversation that took place between Abdullah bin Abbas anhu and Abdullah bin Amr bin As anhu. And Abdullah bin Amr, he asked Ibn Abbas, he said, what is the ayah in the Qur'an? Essentially, what's your favorite ayah in the Qur'an? The ayah that is arja ayah, the ayah that gives the most hope uh, to this ummah. And Ibn Abbas said, well, what's yours? And Ibn Amr, he said, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say, O oh, my servants who have transgressed against themselves, do not despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah forgives all sins. So Ibn Amr is someone, you know, when you look through his life, is someone that was prone to despair and things of that sort. And so this is something that gives him hope and it gives many people hope, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all sins. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he responds and he says, as for me, what I see as the ayah which gives the most hope is when Ibrahim alayhi salam said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi alladhi yuhyi wa yumeet. O oh my Lord who gives life and who gives de death. Arini kayfa tuhi al mawta. Show me how you give life to the dead. Now realize Ibrahim alayhi salam, you know, the ayah before tells us that Ibrahim Islam was just arguing with Nimrud, saying, Rabbi alladhi yuhi wa yumeet, that it's my Lord who gives life and who gives death. And Nimrud responds and says, Ana uhi wa umit. I'm the one who gives life and who gives death. And Ibrahim alayhi salam says, فَإِنَّ اللَّهِ يَأْتِي بِالشَّمْسِ مِنَ الْمَشْرِقِ فَأْتِي بِهَا مِنَ الْمَغْرِبِ Well then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, brings the sun from the mashriq, He brings the sun from the east, so bring it from the west. فَبُهِتَ الَّذِي كَفَرْ and so Nimrud was left in absolute, you know, he was absolutely stunned. Why? Because Nimrud's idea of giving life and giving death, he brought someone that he, was, that, that he had sentenced to death already, and he said, you're free to go, and then he brought a completely innocent man, and he killed him. So he said, I give life and I give death as well. Now Ibrahim Islam just put forth a logical argument that clearly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives life and gives death in, in a way that we cannot give life and give death. And he gives this example of how Allah brings the sun from the east, so bring it from the west. In essence, you know, control the sunrise and, the con and control the sunset if you really feel like you're in control. But Ibrahim salam still asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى Show me how you give life to the dead. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ Will you not believe? قَالَ بَلَى وَلَكِنْ لِيَطْمَئِنَّ قَلْبِي He said, I fully believe but this would put my heart to rest. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually honored the request of Ibrahim alayhi by telling him to take birds and to put them into pieces and put them on different mountains and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bring them back together. Now Ibn Abbas anhu, why does he say that that ayah is the ayah that gives the most hope, that that ayah is really his favorite ayah? Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he commented on that ayah by saying, نَحْنُ أَحَقُّ بِالشَّكِّ مِنْ Ibrahim." We have more right to doubt than Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now, is this hadith of the Messenger وسلم, suggesting that Ibrahim alayhi salam had a doubt in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he doubted Allah in any way? No, because Ibrahim said that I believe. 
But liyatma inna qalbi, this would increase my iman, this would increase my faith if you showed me how you do it, O oh Allah. And so the Prophet ﷺ is telling us, as Ibrahim السلام, asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that, and Ibrahim السلام, wanted his heart to be put at ease, we also, as human beings, at times want to be put at ease. And you know, we have these whispers and we have these doubts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish us for those whispers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish us for internal conversations or internal dialogues. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that Allah has forgiven my ummah. ما حدثت به أنفسها ما لم تقول أو تعمل به as long as that person has only spoken to himself meaning you're having these internal whispers but you haven't spoken of them or acted upon them don't worry Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to punish you these are whispers clearly from the shaytan to take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now going back to the request of Ibrahim السلام, does that mean that there is logic provided for every ruling in the sharia, for every story, for every incident? Can we find a logical explanation? No, absolutely not. You use your aql in Islam, you use your intellect to arrive at the integrity of the naql, to arrive at the integrity of the text. So I know anything that comes from Allah and His Messenger وسلم, is absolute truth, even if my logic doesn't agree with it. However, if I find the proof of it, and this, that's the beauty of studying and the beauty of seeking knowledge. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Those who have a greater awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who are learned. Why? Because by studying the proofs and by studying the evidences and by studying context, your faith increases because almost everything does have a logical explanation to it. But even when it doesn't, I know I've used my intellect, I've used my aql, to arrive at the conclusion that there is no way that the Qur'an and the Sunnah are not divine. And so by doing so, that puts me to ease with everything that comes after that. And so you find Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when uh, the Prophet sallallahu he took his night journey, the journey of al-Isra wal miraj And obviously the Prophet sallallahu when he wakes up and he tells the people that he was taken from Mecca to Jerusalem through the heavens, Abu Jahl mocked the Prophet ﷺ and he called the people and he said, can you repeat what you just said in front of the people? And even some of the Muslims were, were shaken by that. How can the Prophet ﷺ, how can a man be taken from Mecca to Jerusalem to the heavens and back all in one night? So a man comes to Abu Bakr ta'ala anhu and he says, do you hear what Muhammad ﷺ said? And Abu Bakr ta'ala anhu, he responds by saying, if he said it, فَقَدْ صَدَقْ Then he's telling the truth. If he said it, then he's telling the truth. And Abu Bakr says, look, I believe him when he says that something happens to him that's far greater than that. You know, what's greater than him going from Mecca to Jerusalem and to the heavens in one night is that revelation comes to him from the Lord of the heavens. Revelation descends upon him from above the heavens all the way to his heart wasallam. So I believe him with something far greater than that. Why wouldn't I believe him when he tells me that, he, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him from Mecca to Jerusalem to the heavens and back in one night? And now Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, what he's, what he's showing us here, Abu Bakr did not say, well I'm going to need to see proof of what the Prophet saw on the way. You know, if the Prophet can describe some things between Mecca and Jerusalem, then maybe I'll be convinced. No, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, look, I know that this man is a prophet of Allah. I know that this man receives revelation sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So I believe him with whatever he says. Now does that mean when the Prophet ﷺ accurately describes the things that he's seen between Mecca and Jerusalem to the extent that he will tell you وسلم, about a people and where their water was that were you know, on the way from Mecca to Jerusalem that no one would have known unless they were there because they didn't have text messages back then. Does that not increase the faith of a person? When the Prophet ﷺ does that, when the Prophet ﷺ accurately explains these things, of course it does, of course it does. But I don't need that to believe in it in the first place. But it will increase my iman and that's what Ibrahim ﷺ was asking. So it takes us to the next step. Allah ﷺ says in the Qur'an, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ That we will show them our signs in the universe, and even within themselves, right? In the, in the farthest horizons, all the way to themselves. <laughs> until it shows to them, until it's made clear to them that it is the truth, that this is the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is telling us, look, I'm giving you all of these signs, all of these proofs in the deep horizons 
and even within the creation of yourself, that there's no way that a being like you could exist without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until it is made clear to you that this is the truth. Once you, once you have found that truth, there's the pursuit of truth and then there's the pursuit of meaning. And most people spend their lives trying to find the truth and so they never even get to the, the meaning and the purpose of life and what are we supposed to be doing here and so on and so forth. As believers, as Muslims, we've already arrived at the truth. We already know that this is the truth. So now the entire journey of life becomes finding the meaning. And even atheists, you know, I always say this, that, that when you're debating with an atheist or you're speaking to an atheist, by the end of the conversation, they'll be an agnostic, right? They'll start off by saying there is no God, but then when you put forth all the proofs, they'll say, well, there might be a God, or I can see how there would be some divine energy or some God, but you know, I, I, I don't think that there is any religion or any, any guidance or, you know, we're just left to be and we're not sure and so on and so forth. So could all of this, you know, the, the answer to that could, could, w would simply be, could all of this simply be without meaning? Do you really think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created that if there is a God, if you're convinced that there is some kind of divine energy and something that brought us here, because it clearly is, would you really say that all of this is for nothing? That there is no meaning to it? That there is no purpose to it whatsoever? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an that we did not create anything without purpose. Allah didn't create anything in Abath. Everything was created for meaning and purpose. And so for the believer, the journey now becomes a journey of purpose and meaning.